start actually hacking around the Android operating system itself. And so uh, Nick here is going to talk about uh, fake application permissions for Android uh, from his perspective of a first year computer scientist at Robinson College. Is that I'm going to start my talk with a quick discussion about this in the story. So basically, this report is a web security firm, and he went, I want you to write me a nice bit of spyware. And the guy went, okay, I can do that. And he wrote in the Norse crosses. And he played Norse crosses, and it was probably pretty fun. And then it turned off thousand days to a sales summit. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't really what you want. But the guy didn't get an auto to install it. And I think that's really the hard bit about my expiry, is getting people to install it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just scam. But I think it demonstrates that there is a bit of concern about the about, about spyware on the platform. Um, there was also another case of live wallpaper in Android, which is like the anime background we have. Um, uh, a guy wrote one of them which collected quite a lot of personal data and set it off. And it turned out he was just, he just did it by accident, I think, or something like that. Google, all, Google ordered him and it turned out he just did a bit careless. So I don't really know how he knows that, but again, there's, there's a problem with this spiral problem. Uh, and I'm going to show you one of the reasons why I think Android could be wonderful for this. Right, so. <coughs> I don't know how many of you are on your phone, but to install applications, what you do is you go to the marketplace and find the application. And then when we go to install it, <coughs> the permissions that it needs. So Android has the permissions basis. And this means that the application has to ask for what it wants to use. So if it asks, <coughs> if you want to access my application, it has to ask first. And if I don't get permission to access it, then when it tries, it will basically just say you can't, you can't do it, and then the application will probably crash. Uh, it will throw a certain type of exception, and the application probably won't have it crash. And uh, one problem with this is that this, this just doesn't have any sort of level of granularity. Like, so when I install the app, I try to say, okay, you can do everything, or I say, no, you can't do anything. So if you're a user, what are you really going to do? I mean, I quite often play this game pretty good. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that okay. And what this reminds me of is, uh, is this nice little dialogue. Do you know how many of you have seen this one? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, if I think yes, then the, 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 the app that which the ActiveX app can do anything. It can do anything with my computer. And uh, basically, I think you can just always click yes to this, and then you end up with a whole spiral on your computer. Very good. So, my solution to this is providing applications with fake data or sort of mocking permissions. So, if I just install this game, <coughs> right, well, anyway, um, Mocker lets us provide applications with fake data so the permissions are sort of they're granted in a superficial sense, and the application can't tell that in fake. But the data the application gets has no sort of content to it, no meaning to it. So if I run, if I run the game, see so it pops up a little warning for me saying that I can mock stuff. So I'm not really sure why this game wants access to the internet, why it wants access to my library. <coughs> so I turn all of these on, <coughs> and then go back and run it. play the game, and even though some of the stuff is asking for it being sort of denied behind the scenes, the game still works, it's still playable, it doesn't crash. And then if I try and submit my high score, it's not going to actually work, this isn't going to work. So at this point I presume you think, okay, I've, I've, I've scored two on that, that was pretty impressive. So I, I want to let it go on the internet, so I can go here and I can allow this application to actually internet. And then hopefully if I... <coughs> Now I get some ads you see coming up, which is next week. And then, oh, I can't, I can submit. <coughs> well, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Right, so there are a couple of different kinds of state data that we can write up here. So I just demonstrated the internet there. What we can also do is mock access to personal data which is stored in a database, for example, the contacts. So if I go to my contact database here, I have one contact who's very private. So I'm going to display up to everyone. So if I go to the messaging app, 
And when I got a new message, <coughs> start typing in his name, then it displays his phone number. And at that point, it's been read to the database. So that could be sent off to a server somewhere. So we don't want that. So I can go to my logging application, go and find messaging. And I can turn it on. And I go back to messaging. Now, It's also, that, that works with uh, contacts and SMS and all that sort of thing, so that's the way we run tax to them. Then we also have a notification. So if I receive an SMS, then the phone is configured to run a set of pieces of code, have an application which happens to that. And in this case, I've got two. I've got messaging, and I've got hand sent SMS, which is the third part of the application. So if I send myself a text message, then we see and uh, both the apps are handled. So now what I can do is I can go and find Answer SMS. And I can say, I don't want Answer SMS to be able to act on that. So then, I'm going to do the same again. <coughs> so this time it's only the message. So that's the example of notification. And finally, we have uh, framework features. So, for example, I've gone to Google Maps. And I say, my location. Then it can request access to my location. And it can display that on the app. So I can go to Mocha to find the maps. And I can not allow it to do that. And then, this time, my location won't work. But it's still back to the internet. The tiles still work perfectly. And the rest of the application functions as intended. Right. So now I'm just going to talk for a little bit about the, the sort of technical aspect of how it So basically the first thing is kill the animals really hard. <laughs> it's, it's a real thing. <coughs> like the first two weeks of my project I spent just like sort of trying to get this thing compiled. And uh, every sort of four hours I go and find Rip and be like, this isn't working at all. I don't know what to do. And then Rip would sort of help me to, to fix it. Um, and this is mainly because there's not really very much documentation on how to do it, I think. And the stuff there is is sort of scattered around the internet. So one of the things I'm planning on doing is writing up how to do this, because this is only one thing you could do with a, a sort of customized and operating system. There's, there's many other things you could do with lots of possibilities. So it would be good to have some more documentation about that. So uh, for my project, basically there's, there's, there's three levels of the animal um, This is sort of a gecko version diagram on the internet, and this diagram over there. I don't know. Um, so what we, we want is we want applications to not have to be changed to run on, on this this version of the operating system. Uh, and they have no idea what's going on. They can't even access the, the API to check if it's a misleading model or anything like that. So when you saw that I could download out from the market and I could usually stop Google Apps having to change the thought. So I want to find the Android framework where some of the permissions where some of the permissions are handled. So stuff like reading from the contact database and uh, Location and that sort of thing, that's all in that sort of layer. And then the, some of the permissions are actually handled by the, the Linux kernel itself, the very core of the operating system. So accessing the internet, for example, is, is done through that. So that requires a few changes to that fabric as well. So uh, I think there's a, a bit more that can be done with this. So one of the main things we've been looking at is getting these changes sort of pushed up upstream somewhere. Because there's this guy called Cyanogen who makes custom firmware parameter phones. And uh, some of the stuff he does is pretty nice, but he supports it really well, and it is, it's quite well done. So we look at maybe getting my changes into Simon. There's been some discussion about that, so that's one thing we're hoping to do. Uh, something else is auditing of apps. So this sort of partially solves the problem from the, the user side of things. So if, if I'm an end user, I can, I can sort of sandbox and have a bit, a bit more tight to use it. But uh, if I'm a security researcher, say, then I can't, there's no way to see what the app's actually doing. At the moment, in terms of the Android business system. So, I've written a little, a little bit of the model framework as well, but there's not really much of an end user facing like that. So, uh, in conclusion, I think this, this demonstrates that more can be done with the business systems on smartphones. Like, they could maybe be a bit more sort of fine grained, you could use a bit more control, because really you want the user to be in control of what's being done with their personal data, even, even if that's not what the access is. So, uh, 